Okay, for this question, we want to see if these three polynomials form a linearly independent set in P2. Remember that P2 is the set of all polynomials that have degree two or less. And so what we do is we set up a linear combination of uh, those P's and set it equal to zero. And if it turns out that all the K's must be zero, then it would be a linearly independent set. And if there um, is a possibility of having uh, some of the Ks be non-zero, uh, then it would be linearly dependent. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in the polynomials. And then I'm going to set about doing the algebra on these um, just to see uh, if this works or not. So um, notice that I'm going to have uh, constants and x values and uh, x squared values. So I'm going to uh, multiply all this out, but regroup it uh, by those terms. So if I were to write all the constants, I'm going to have k1 from the first one, 5k2 from the second, and k3 from the third. Now let's do the same thing for the x's. So I'm going to have negative k1 uh, plus 3k2 plus 3k3. That's the coefficient for x. And then let's do the same thing for the x squared. I don't have one here, uh, but I do have negative 2k2 and minus k3 for the x squared coefficients. Now, it's pretty easy to see that if I want that to equal zero, then each one of these coefficients must equal zero. In other words, I get the linear system, uh, k1 plus 5k2 plus k3 equals zero, uh, negative k1 plus 3k2 plus 3k3 equals zero, and negative 2k2 minus k3 equals zero. Now, notice this is a homogeneous system. And so what we've seen before is that if, um, I guess there's multiple ways that we could uh, show this, but we could show that if the coefficient matrix is invertible, then that means that if I were to turn this into a matrix equation, um, which let me go ahead and do that right beside. So 1... 5, 1, negative 1, 3, 3, and 0, negative 2, negative 1. If this were multiplied by k1, k2, k3, and equaled 0, 0, 0, this is an equivalent um, equation to this system. Now, notice if this were invertible, I would multiply by the inverse on the left on both of these, and what I would get on the left-hand side is just this column vector, uh, but what I would get over here is that inverse times zero, zero, zero. Well, of course, that's going to give me zero. So in other words, if this is invertible, then the only solution is that the k's would be zeros. So let's check and see if that's invertible. Now, you could try to find the inverse of it if you wanted to, but an easier way is to just find the determinant, because remember that a uh, matrix is invertible, square matrix is invertible, um, if and only if the determinant is non-zero. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Um, and show that that is, um, or show what that ends up being. So uh, I get negative 3 plus 0 plus 2 minus 0 plus 6 minus 5. Uh, and notice that that does end up equaling 0. So uh, that means that uh, this is not invertible, which means there are some, uh, at least one of these non-zero uh, would solve it. And so therefore, that means that that set is linearly dependent. Now, in the notes, um, I worked it a different way. I went from this linear system, I wrote it as an augmented matrix and started applying EROs to that. And what happened was, if you look at those notes, I did get a row of all zeros. And what that means, if I get that, uh, in fact, I had that uh, X1, or sorry, K1 and K2 are the um, leading uh, variables, and K3 was free. 
So because K3 is free, um, I have a choice uh, of what to make K3. And that way uh, I can choose it to be non-zero and I would determine that it was linearly dependent that way as well. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, if you have any questions, let me know.